Hallo zusammen, I'm your Vlog Dave. We all know the German language can be quite tricky at times, for both learners and for native Germans as well. So, what is it with those recurring popular German linguistic mistakes? Hmm, let's talk about five of them today, shall we? Number one. Zu Ende versus zu Ende. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, in a way, this very first example is a pretty simple one compared to some of the others, because in this case, one option is completely wrong, completely off, and the other option is correct. When you think of adverbs, you'd probably associate this part of speech with a single word. And while this is true most of the time, it doesn't really apply to this case, because zu Ende as one word isn't correct. The German version of over or all over is zu Ende. And the second option, all over, might be a little learning aid for you, because in English you have two terms, all over basically, and in German you have two terms as well, zu Ende. And please keep in mind to spell Ende with a capital letter, because it relates to the noun das Ende, the end or the ending. Number two, dasselbe versus das gleiche. Oh boy, this is a very, very frequently made mistake by many Germans. Either way, this word battle might be more tricky than the previous one, because in this case, both terms are correct in their own way, but there is a semantic difference. I assume many Germans might simply not know of this difference, or they just confuse those terms for... reasons. The pronoun dasselbe means item or selfsame, or simply the same. Something is identical, almost a copy or a duplicate. Dasselbe refers to neuter nouns, while derselbe is linked to masculine and dieselbe to feminine nouns. Das gleiche, apart from being spelled and used as two distinct terms that make a phrase, seems very similar, but in fact it implies just that. Something is similar, samey or maybe even roughly the same, but not the exact same thing. Again, for masculine terms it's der gleiche, and for feminine words it's die gleiche. And as you can see, it can also be translated with the same, which can make it all even more difficult to grasp the semantic difference between dasselbe and das gleiche in German. But actually, there's a German mnemonic in order to remember the difference. Zwei Eier gleichen sich, sie sind aber nicht dieselben. Two eggs look similar or samey, but they aren't exactly the same. Works, kinda, I guess. Number three, Anfang diesen Jahres versus Anfang dieses Jahres. But in a way, this one might be a bit simpler as well, because only one version is correct. Although it's pretty popular to say Anfang diesen Jahres, at or around the beginning of this year, it's wrong grammatically. Anfang dieses Jahres, the correct phrase in the genitive case, includes the demonstrative pronoun dieses. Instead of Anfang dieses Jahres, you could also say Anfang des Jahres. And des is an inflected form of the neuter article das. Das Jahr, the year, in the genitive case. In general, an attribut, an adjunct or a modifier, that follows right after terms like der Anfang or der Beginn, the beginning, or das Ende, the ending or the end, has to be in the genitive case. If you try to change Anfang diesen Jahres in a similar way, you'd get a sentence like Anfang den Jahres. And you can't say this in German. Number four. Volles Verständnis versus vollstes Verständnis. While some Germans might simply not know rules that apply to the previous example, this one is more obvious. At least when you think about it properly. You might know that the term einzigste is a wrong German form of the adjective einzig, only, which isn't comparable. Voll, meaning full, can be compared. Dein Glas ist voller als meins. Vollste is a form of voll that neither exists nor makes much sense, since voll already implies something is full. Well, as long as it's not a comparison. And number five, werf versus wirf. 
These two words are just one example of many that all link to the same mistake. Werf with an I with a German E is wrong. The correct imperative form is wirf with an English I, the German E, wirf. Not all German verbs do change their root and their vowel to an E when it comes to using the imperative form der Imperativ, but some do and it's often common terms and words that people tend to use regularly. But instead of the correct forms like gib das zurück, give it back or is das auf, eat it up, many Germans would rather say gib das zurück or es das auf. Hmm. And there is even a bit more to the German Imperativ, the German Imperative form, but I think this should do for now. In case you might not know about it yet, you can download my learning scripts when you become a supporter on my Patreon page. This way you don't really need to take notes while watching the video, pausing it several times and all that. You can just kick back, relax and do in-depth learning with the scripts, so to speak. I'm trying to upload a script after the respective video went online. I'm not creating scripts for all my videos, but for a vast majority of them. Thanks for considering the support option, since it really helps me to focus more on the Vlogdave channel. If you want to, you could also give a donation, a tip for the channel via PayPal. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and to share it with other people. Also feel free to follow me on social media. I'm your Vlog Dave, tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.